Hello everyone, welcome to the class of AI and today we are going to see a tutorial on a dog versus cat classification problem and which is a which is a classification problem and the data set is available on Kaggle and you can see here from the image that in this competition we are going to write an algorithm to classify whether the image contain either is a dog or a cat which can be which we can easily recognize by human eyes that this picture is cat dog and this picture is cat right and the data set is available over here and the size of the data set is nearly 812 mb so we are going to build a convolution neural network model and i'll tell you how to do this using uh, python and we are going to code on Colab and uh, we are going to directly download the data from Kaggle to our Colab repository, repository. and uh, I will show you how to do that. So for that, uh, you can see I have opened my Colab environment and I'm going to connect a new notebook into this. So a new notebook is now started and I have to start a GPU so in the runtime I have to change my runtime to GPU so in the virtual environment I have been allocated to a, to a GPU which I can use it and you can see that if I connect it allocating and for me now a machine is being allocated initializing and allocated very soon and look at it now and you can see currently in my directory there is no data right and I have already opened for you some code means my code which I'm going to use so I'm going to tell you how to uh, do each and everything step by step and so first of all I have to the class of AI this is my username of Kaggle and I have to enter my key from here so for that what I need to do I have imported an OS uh, package and I'm going to use my Kaggle username and my key and I have wrote this particular command to download the data so if I open this Kaggle page over here you can see that if I go here and go to my account on my Kaggle page I can generate a new API key token and it's there and if I go to this particular part I go to downloads Kaggle JSON 2 and you can see this is my username and this is my key which I'm going to use today if I come back to here and if I enter this key over here right and now if I need to download the data I have to go back to the page and I have already accepted the terms and condition so if you have not accepted terms and condition please go to the rules and accept the terms and condition and you go to the data copy this API which I've already copied it and if I paste this over here like this so maybe this right so Kaggle competition download this 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 key copied and if I click it here you can see the data started downloading and it's saying that it's a warning that I'm using my outdated API version which have no problem in it but actually my data is nearly downloading and you can see it's downloaded and now I click it and you see the three files are created train test and sample submission file right and let me close this now and if I'm going to use my right thing so first I have to extract my data so if I go and create a new code over here what I am using that from zip file this is the package I'm importing a function called zip file and I'm telling where my train data is so my train data is in my virtual environment and if I double click it I copy path and if I have no information of where my data is you can copy the path I have I copied here copy path and paste it here so here my data is in the virtual environment which I have directly downloaded from Kaggle and I'm going to unzip it I'm printing it done so message is done so done will be taken and you can see that 
it's currently unzipping my data. And the message done is printed because it's unzipped my data. So the new train folder is created, which is a folder, not a zip file, because all the data which I have extracted is came under here. Now my next step is to create, a, first of all, I have to copy this particular thing, maybe this all. I will explain you one by one what is this. So if I go to the code, I have created a new cell. And first of all, I'm defining that in the content train folder, list, I'm using a function list dir, and uh, means it's going to print basically. And then next OS walk, I'm using file print file count and how many files are there. And then what I'm doing basically, that I'm creating, um, I'm telling that content.train is the original data set I have and I'm creating another data set based I'm telling make I'm making a directory by the name of base dir where I'm creating a small folder of it means like means whatever the data is in the train I'm going to copy some of the data from it because I'm going to show you an example and I'm going to if I'm going to use the whole data set my training will take long time so I did it and it's nearly counted the files that there are 25,000 images into this and my new base directory is created and you see the cats underscore da and and dog small has been created so whatever i'm going to do i'm going to now copy my data over here so you see this particular code i will explain you what is this so <clears throat> let me go here and copied this particular code oops yes right so what I am doing basically that I am joining the path what I'm doing I'm creating the train dir I'm creating a validation directory and I'm creating a test directory all right so if I go to here maybe I can explain you a little bit about it so online drawing so this one is there so so what I am doing basically so I have a main root folder where all my data is there and from there I'm creating three folders one is training folder another is validation folder and other is test folder right so this is my test folder and what I'm doing here from this 25,000 images, I'm going to copy some of the images in train folder. I'm going to copy some images in the validation folder and put some images into the test folder. Why I'm doing this? Because whatever the machine learning model I'm going to create, I'm going to train on this data. And while training the model at each poke, I'm going to test that how my data, how my model is doing. I'm going to validate this on this particular set of images. And then when the finally model is trained, I'm going to test it on that test data so I hope it is clear so now if I go back to my this particular path so see I am creating a train directory I am creating a validation directory I am creating a test directory and then what I am doing under the train directory right under the train directory you say I am creating two folders called cats and dogs under validation directory I am creating two folders called cats and dogs and under test directory I'm creating two folders called cats and dogs so if I execute it currently see there is nothing in this folder its folder is empty so as soon as I run this code so now see in this folder three folder has been created train test and validation and in this test folder we have cats and dogs in this train folder we have cats and dogs in validation folder we have cats and dogs and if I see under this any of the folder its folder is empty there is nothing right so I have just created the folder to copy the data sets. Now I have to copy my images from there, from the main folder. So, <clears throat> so if I am going to, I will explain you in a moment that what this code is doing. So you can see I have used a package called shuttle. Uh, and in this, what I'm doing basically, because in this train images folder, we have the images by the name of cats and dogs. So what I'm doing, I'm using this function, I'm using this shuttle function, which going to read the cat images with the name and the end part is JPG. And 
I'm going to read one, two, something like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy 1000 images of cat and I'm going to put those 1000 images into my train folder, cat folder. Then similarly, again, so for example, in here, what I'm doing, basically, I'm going to create. So here we have cats, we have dogs, we have cats, we have dogs and again we have cats and dogs all right then from here i have nearly 25k images right so i have 25k images over here so i'm going to copy 1000 images of cat so 1k images of cat and 1k images of dog right so you can see from the code that I'm copying first 1000 images of cat first 1000 images of dog and putting into train folder of cat train folder of dog then 1000 to 500 images to the validation folder so that means here I'm going to have 500 images of cats and 500 images of dog over here right and then again 500 images of cats and 500 images of dog right so you can see that these all folders are created currently they are you can see they are empty so now if i am going to run this tick 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 and it's done so now you can see here in the test folder we have uh, it's going to take the time but see all the cats images are here Similarly, validation and train folder have all the images. Now that copy, images are copied into my dedicated folders. Now, if I need to see that how many, just to verify that how many images in each folder I have. So what I did, I copied that, that in this particular folder, in this particular folder, in this particular folder, how many images I have. So let's count it. So see, the training cat images, 1000 training, dog images 1000 validation images 500 validation dog images 500 total test cat images 500 total test dog images 500 so that means i'm going to work on this 2000 images and i'm going to train my model on 1000 images right now coming back to uh, a model which i'm going to show you uh, in a moment so I'm going to discuss the model also with you that why this model is good or why this model is bad. So what I'm using, I'm using Keras to build a CNN model. And uh, what I did, I have created a sequential model. And at the first layer, I have created 32 kernels, right of three by three, two size, three by three size, right? So you can see like uh, an activation function i'm adding relu and i'm telling that the input size of my images is 100 by 150 by 100 by 50 by 3 because they are color images so if there are not color images you can change it to one because i am working on the color images so I, I have kept it one later i have added a max pooling layer two by two so it's going to operate the max pooling function then again a second layer of 62 kernels three by three same size relu activation function then again a max pooling func layer this max pooling will help you to reduce the size of your layers like uh, right and then i'm adding more high dimensional kernel over here more high dimensional kernel over here so a lot of people ask question that uh, why this is start with 32 and then 64 and then 64 so if you see any cnn model so convolution sorry Convolution neural network, right? So let me see. So if I go to any image, right? So for example, let's see maybe this one, right? So you can see from this image. So you can see from this image. And this is a very good uh, tutorial, although. So I have an image over here. I have created a big means the thickness of this particular thing of the kernel is the number of kernels you have so initially we have 32 then we have 64 so we are basically trying to 
dense the number of kernels and at the end so what we do basically we do convol relu pooling convol relu pooling so we do convolution relu pooling convolution relu pooling and at the end we get very thick uh, with lot of kernels at the feature learning part and then before doing that before putting into a fully connected neural network we used to flatten it so this particular first layer are used to capture the shapes or you can say the edges these type of uh, these type of uh, properties from the image and as we go deeper into the network the more high quality features will be learned by the model right so i hope this is clear to you that why we are doing we are we are increasing over here so you can see up to here we did a feature learning part so this particular part which i have highlighted now this is the feature learning part of your neural layer of your convolution neural network then i have added a flatten layer over here which flats basically my model so here you can see it over here i have added a flattening layer over here and then uh, i added a dense layer which is a fully connected layer so 512 number of neurons and activation function relu and uh, i don't know okay so okay so let me copy this there is some so tick 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 all right so after this you can see that classification means we have added a dense layer which is 512 number of neurons over here and activation function and relu and then i have added the last layer and here i am using the sigmoidal function uh, sigmoid function because this is a binary classification problem so here you can see there are multiple classes over here so you can put a softmax function but as we are currently working in our binary classification model so we have put a sigmoidal function right so which gives you basically a probability of means whether your particular means image is either cat or dog right so now if i create this model and i'm going to print the summary so you see it's using a tensorflow backend and now my model is printed so this is the summary of my model i have already start told you that i have started with the image size right and we are we are means basically reducing we are increasing the number of kernels you can see so started for 32 then 64 then 128 and then 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 up to here we have did this and then we added a flattening layer and then we added a dense layer and then again a dense layer which is a sigmoidal function so in total we are going to learn uh 33435321 number of parameters in our model okay so now let's compile our model right so so let's compile the model so let's do the code oops let me delete this particular thing so in uh, compiling the model i'm i'm using a uh, optimizer so why binary cross entropy because it's a binary classification problem and we are trying to use the minimize the loss of cross entropy i'm using optimizer rms prop so if you see in keras keras optimizers optimizers so here so there are a lot of different optimizers for lot of different things you can say ada delta agada grad rms prop sgd adam ada delta right so there are so many optimizers which you can use but i'm using it <clears throat> for my own purpose i have told that the learning rate is 3.0004 and matrix is accuracy and i compiled the model right <clears throat> so the model is now compiled now before learning the model <clears throat> what i did that i'm using a data augmentation kind of technique right so <clears throat> i will explain you sorry so what i'm using i'm using image generator which comes with pre processing of the images so keras pre processing image called image generator so i'm basically uh, means because i'm trying to put the images into a form of uh, uh, image means uh, in the batches uh, i'm i'm going to, i'm using a function called flow from directory so i'm going to give the bunch of images into the model and you can see what i'm doing i'm creating a training generator i'm creating a test generator and in training generator what i'm doing so train gen when i'm doing i'm rescaling my images so train generator what i'm using i'm using a flow from directory train dir is why where my images are there right so you remember train dir i have created the function over here 
so you can see train dir tick 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 uh, yes train dir okay anyway so train dir is there what i'm creating i'm putting the target size of 150 by 50 i'm putting a batch size of 20 glass mode binary and for the test i'm instead of passing the test folder i'm passing the validation folder because in the learning of the model i'm going to put the validation directory because at each poke it's going to test that how means it's going to validate that how my model is doing right so if you want to know more about image data generator you are free to search it on keras and image data generator so image data generator you can see from here so image pre-processing or maybe we can we can quickly google it right image data generator keras you can see image data generator so this is the code but i would like to show you what it's do basically so yeah so i have already told you and we are doing data augmentation so maybe in our next example i'll tell you that uh, why we are doing this why we are augmenting data so in why we are augmenting data because image may be you can take image in various shapes like you know like maybe sometime your head position is here sometime your head position is there you flip the image you rotate the image so basically image translation rotation changing of the scale sharing horizontal you can do a lot of things but i'm making it very simple initially so i'm not doing anything i'm just rescaling the images and putting it for you so i hope uh, if i run it so you see found 200 2000 images belong to class 2 found 1000 1, images belong to class 2 classes so that means yeah so you know means two classes that means um, 1000 for each class and now if i am going to run this model so if i run this model you can see i did this so what I'm doing, I'm model fit generator because I have created a generator over here. So I have to fit a generator. So the train generator is the generator where my all training data is there. So it, I put it on train generator. Step per epochs, I'm using 100 epochs. How many epochs you have? Three, 30 epochs. And on what data you are going to validate your model. So my data, in which is in validation DIR, it's into validation generator so that i'm explaining i'm putting with validation generator and validation steps are 10 and when the model is trained we are going to save our model by the name of cats underscore dog small one h5 which is uh, a format in which you can save your model and my model start learning right so you can see tick tick, tick hopefully very soon it's not started yet Yes, so it started learning and you can see tick, 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 the first epoch is nearly done and my validation accuracy started with 61% of the validation accuracy, right? And then it's increased to 65. Second epoch is currently running. Third epoch, uh, 65, it didn't improve. Uh, validation accuracy didn't improve. Here it's gone down and then tick, tick, tick let's see let's see it's increased little 66.50 and while it's it's doing it's learning so let it so welcome back the model is trained now and let's see how it's did so we are going to use a function we are going to basically plot the validation and accuracy and uh, training and validation accuracy so i use this code so you can see that my training is improving my training is getting better and better and better but my validation accuracy is not improving so it is a case of overfitting that training is getting better and better and better but it's not doing great on validation so that means it is a definitely a case of overfitting what model is doing basically over here model is 
unnecessary fitting a complex function and uh, it's learning the noise from the data so we should avoid this so if my plot something look like tick 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 uh, so if i go here new right so if my plot will something look like this as a training and this as something as a validation then it's good but currently it's doing like this 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 so which is not good so this is validation accuracy this is validation accuracy this is training accuracy so this validation accuracy if come like this then it's a good moral and if it is doing like that so it's not a good case it's clearly the case of overfitting <clears throat> right so let me show you how to avoid this case so you i hope you have heard about the dropout so if i google so google drop out gif so drop out gif mm, not this one drop out so i hope if this is a gif yes so you can see what is happening over here so drop out basically a kind of a model what we do that imagine a scenario that your cnn model is your eye right and in layers in each layer you are randomly disconnecting some of the neurons connection so that means in nutshell you are forcing some neurons which are active to learn the whole representation of the data so consider this that you are watching some image by your both eyes and then suddenly you keep a hand on your one eye and forcing other eye to learn the representation so this technique is pretty good in avoiding overfitting which is known as dropout and this has been introduced if i'm not wrong uh, by jeffrey hinton so let me see uh, in montreal so dropout 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 not gif so let me show you dropout i'm not maybe wiki yes neural so dropout is a regularization technique patented by google and uh, i believe it says one so definitely it proposed by hinton's group in toronto so they are they're one of the premier in um, premier means one of the legend in neural networks right so they propose this technique so what you are supposed to do now instead it means uh, one so let me copy this first so i can show you what is happening so go back to the code let add one more uh let me wash it here this side little bit code and so what i did over here everything is same but you can see that i have added a dropout over here right so at very end you are free to use add dropout wherever you want but i'm just adding it here because if i add more dropouts it will add more complexity to the to the model and it will take time to train the model so now currently if i if you see so tick, 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 so x and then model dot summary right so you can see everything is same everything is same but the here i have added a dropout that's it there is nothing different in this model right now let's uh, let's compile this model again the same thing nothing has changed binary cross entropy function and tick 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 i have compiled the model and then i again use image generator oh yes i am i'm doing a little bit different from here so tick 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 tick, tick. copy this part and then i copy i will explain you what so i am slightly changing the things over here so you remember we did we created a train generator model like up over here again so what i'm doing image generator i'm rescaling the data but this time i'm rotating my image by 40 degree right i'm changing the shift i'm changing the width of the image by 20 percent changing the height of the image by 20% sharing the image zooming the image putting the horizontal flip true so I'm doing a lot of that thing of the images so imagine like this that you have your image with each image 
there will be multi copy multiple copies of your each image so that means you, now you are augmenting your data so for example one cat image is there and then you are taking the same image in in that image you are rotating the image in next you are shifting the range height and weight then sharing it then zooming it and sometime flipping it right so that what i did with the training data so you can see i did only for the training over here i just i'm not going to do anything on the test data so i just just means you can comment it or also if you want but means you can see for the train data generator i'm putting into flow right so train gen data gen and right and then in train gen i'm flowing it from the directory means i'm telling my images are here do everything what i have defined over here then again i'm doing the same thing for means i'm not doing anything because uh, in the validation data I, i'm not validating it on different different means i'm not doing the same things because i hope you remember that means when we are training the model we are going to working on the train folder so if we do the same thing on the validation folder it makes sense sometime but it means if i don't do that then, then doesn't make any difference right so if i comment it i don't know maybe comment this part unnecessary i wrote it so here if i just cut this and create this particular part you see the data augmentation part is done then i'm going to fit the model this time because it's going to take much more time so i'm just doing it for 20 pokes instead of 30 if you want i can do it for 30 pokes also but this is going to make take some time i'm telling the validation step 50 so now let's do it So guys, welcome back and see our model is trained and now the validation accuracy is 74.56% and let's plot the plot for it, right? So let's go here, copy again this code and cut, oopsie, and so now if I see this, tick, 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 now see guys, previously if you see my model, like this right and now like and the training accuracy was just increasing but validation accuracy is not increasing similarly the loss is going down training loss validation is going loss is going up but now just by adding the dropout and introducing some kind of data augmentation see what's happening both training and validation is getting better and better as we have increased the epochs and the loss is gone down which is one which is i can say is the benefit of uh, using dropout and WR augmentation that you can avoid it uh, overfitting and this is how you build your simple convolution neural network now time to to show you that the same things like i just did this because to show you but if you want to see have a better look of it so go to the class of ai github repository and see deep transfer learning and Exercise one is classification of cats versus dog. And if you open it, you can see some of the nice codes. I got this beautiful image from this guy, the Georgian. And you see all the codes which I have used is available over here, right? And means I have added some text also, right? So you can see and read it if you feel interested. and means free free to expose thanks for watching class the, thanks for watching the class of ai and do subscribe my channel i will keep you updated about this all stuff thank you very much